Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video we're going to talk, um, I'm going to show you what I have my students know of um, digestive histology. So just a few slides of histology from different um, digestive organs. This um, slide that we're looking at now, or this image, is um, from a section of human esophagus. To orient where we are, um, out here where I'm playing with the mouse, this is the lumen of the, of the um, esophagus. This layer of the wall is the part that comes in contact with the food bolus as it passes by. This is called the mucosa. The mucosa in this case is stratified squamous epithelium and its bottom is this kind of purplish line here. Under that we have submucosa. So that's the next layer in, submucosa. And then lastly out here we have muscularis. The fourth layer of the alimentary canal is called serosa, but the majority of the esophagus doesn't have serosa because as it's running through the chest, it's kind of deep in the tissue so it doesn't have serosa. It's not actually out in a cavity. Um, so rather it's surrounded by adventitia, which is kind of a collection of different types of uh, um, loose connective tissue, blood vessels and such. So again, the layers that we can see, this is mucosa, this is submucosa, and this is muscularis. Uh, there's also a structure that we see here, there's a gland. This is probably a mucus producing gland. Mucus is produced in the esophagus to help lubricate the bolus as it passes down the tube. Um, and also, when we look at the muscular layer here, the uh, muscularis layer, you'll notice that there's two different layers to this muscularis here in the esophagus. There's a layer where the, um, where the fibers of the smooth muscle cells are running um, the length of the tube in a longitudinal fashion. And then there's another layer where the um, smooth muscle fibers are in a circular arrangement, so they're wrapped around the tube. Those fibers are important for peristaltic contractions, for example. And that is human esophagus. Um, the other picture I have for human esophagus is here, and it's already labeled for mucosa, submucosa, and muscularis. This is also esophagus, but this happens to be from uh, probably a mouse. This is from a slide that's titled um, trachea and esophagus. And the esophagus is in the center of the field of view. At the very top up there, you can see part of the trachea. Um, and again, for my students, I always have them be able to name the layers of the alimentary canal that we can see. So where my pointer is right now, and where the pointer in the microscope is pointing actually, that is um, mucosa facing the lumen. In here would be the lumen of the esophagus. And we get mucosa, and then under the mucosa, We've got submucosa in this neighborhood here, or over here. And then under that, we've got the muscularis layer. And out here, we would have serosa if there were serosa here, but um, again, for the um, esophagus, there's not um, serosa, at least not in any of my slides. There may be serosa at the very end of the esophagus, uh, but I don't have slides that show that region. So that's mouse esophagus. Let's move to the next image. This is also mouse esophagus at a higher magnification. And as long as we're here, let's go ahead and go through the layers. This is mucosa again. And then submucosa. And muscularis. This is high magnification of the esophagus. So we're, most of the view just contains the mucosal layer. And at this magnification, you can really see uh, what the mucosa of the esophagus is made up of, which is stratified squamous epithelium. And under it, we can see part of the uh, submucosa. This is another organ entirely. Here we're looking at pancreas. Um, and there's a couple of different structures I can point out in this lower magnification image. Um, this area here, you may remember from endocrine system, this is called the pancreatic islets or a, I, this, is a, this is a pancreatic islet, also known as an islet of Langerhans. They're lighter in color, and there's one of them here. There's a pan pancreatic islet down here as well. 
Um, there's another one here, and another one up here, and another one over here. Um, by the way, just more broadly speaking, this is definitely histology of a gland, and one of the ways that you know this is a gland um, is that you have these lobules separated by a little bit of connective tissue. So a lobule here and connective tissue between the lobules, another lobule here and so on. Um, other structures particular to the pancreas, this is a rather large pancreatic duct over here. And there's another smaller pancreatic duct over here. Um, probably another pancreatic duct behind my pointer there. And there's a receptor here that's particular to the um, pancreas. This is a Pacinian corpuscle or um, lamellar corpuscle there for detecting pressure. And I remember the first time I found one of these, I was like, why are there Pacinian corpuscles in the pancreas? Um, here's what I hypothesize. Uh, the pancreas lies under the stomach. So when the stomach fills, it will apply pressure to the pancreas and it makes sense for the pancreas to be able to, to detect that pressure um, and may, perhaps as a signal to start releasing the product that it releases for the digestive tract. Um, speaking of which, the dark purplish tissue that we see around the pancreatic islets and in many other places in these lobules here, that is a senar tissue. Or you could also say these are a senar cells. The senar cells make up the beginning of the exocrine gland part of the pancreas. The acenar cells make pancreatic juice, which contains lots of different digestive enzymes for breaking our food down at the molecular level for doing chemical digestion. Um, and the pancreatic juice contains bicarbonate in order to buffer the stomach's acidic secretions when those secretions enter the small intestine. So again, these are a senar. They make pancreatic juice. And these are the islets of Langerhorns. The islets of Langerhorns or pancreatic islets is probably the more proper term. The pancreatic islets produce the um, hormones that the pancreas produces. Insulin and glucagon are the two major ones. And that's it for this slide. Let's look at the next image. This is just higher magnification. And um, from this image, the two structures you should really be able to identify what do we see here? And again, that lighter colored area, that's a pancreatic islet. And what's the darker purple colored tissue out here? That's a senar tissue or a senar cells. Um, what's the structure up here? That's a pancreatic duct. There's the labeled image, same image labeled. Here's a nice image of that larger pancreatic duct that we saw two images ago. This is a nice, large pancreatic duct. And for the most of the rest of the view, um, in terms of what type of tissue we can see, we can see a CNR tissue. I don't see any obvious pancreatic islets in view. Next image in the last histology that I have my students know for digestive system, this is um, a section of human liver. This uh, liver has actually been stained. They put a red stain in here into the, um, some of the hepatic portal veins, basically, and you can nicely see how the blood flows through here. Um, first of all, I guess, to make sure you can recognize this as liver, what you're always looking for, regardless of staining, is these kind of geometric shapes that you see inside of the liver, and I'm circling a few of these geometric shapes. Um, at the center of these geometric shapes will be a larger vein, and then, then at the periphery of these geometric shapes, making up the corners of the shapes usually. We have uh, other veins. The, the veins on the periphery are coming from the hepatic portal system. And the hepatic portal system, again, is a vascular system that is taking blood from the digestive organs, like the small intestine, large intestine, stomach, and esophagus. That blood that serviced those organs and that absorbed nutrients, potentially, and potentially toxins, from your digestive tract, that blood first goes to the liver through that hepatic portal system. So you can imagine blood coming in here from the portal system. It is then going to travel down through these little um, kind of channels in the lobules of the liver. And as it moves through those little channels, that blood can be dealt with by the hepatocytes that line those uh, tiny channels. 
The hepatocytes will take out nutrients potentially for storage, for example, glucose. Hepatocytes store glucose for later when we need it, and that prevents our blood sugar from getting too high even if we ate a lot of sugar. Um, and the hepatocytes could also maybe detoxify some of those toxins that we absorbed from our digestive tract. And then once that blood has been dealt with in that way, it goes back to general circulation via this central vein um, in the middle of the liver's lobule. Uh, for those of you that might need it, these structures out here and out here um, and, and probably here, those are hepatic triads. And they're called hepatic triads because they contain a hepatic vein, um, a systemic artery because the liver needs oxygen and such from the body so there's actually a systemic ar artery that comes in to, to deliver oxygen to the hepatocytes as well. Um, and there is a, there's a bile duct in here as well and those are the three vessels that this is named for. There's often actually also a lymphatic vessel in there. Um, in terms of the bile, by the way, you can imagine again that blood going through there and being dealt by the dealt with by the hepatocytes. Those hepatocytes have another job, which is to produce bile, and some of the waste products um, actually get put into the bile from the hepatocytes. The bile travel travels along separate channels and heads back over here to the triad to go down that hepatic duct, and eventually to be stored in the um, gallbladder and/or delivered to the small intestine. Enough with this slide, that's the liver. And this is a, another image of um, a section of the liver. This is just higher magnification. And again, we can see a pretty large kind of geometric structure in here and maybe another geometric structure over here. And again, that's the clear indicator that we're looking at liver. All right, so now that we've covered uh, digestive histology, let's uh, do a little bit of quizzing to help you remember. Um, for this slide, questions that I might ask, what organ does this section come from? And the answer to that question is this is esophagus. Um, how about, let's name the layer at the pointer. And the layer at the pointer, we're referring to the layer of the alimentary canal, and that pointer happens to be in the submucosa. Uh, how about, what is this layer up here? That is mucosa. And what layer is down here? That again is muscularis. How about this slide? Um, name the organ at the pointer. And the answer to that is uh, esophagus. If you said esophagus, you got it right. Good job. Um, and I said at the pointer because there is a trachea up here. We want to make sure. I wanted to make sure we're talking about this organ down here. Um, and again, we could do a layer, uh, name this layer. And that is muscularis. Um, how about name this layer? That's the submucosa. And then how about name the layer at the pointer, at the microscope pointer? And that again is mucosa. So for my students, be ready to name the layers and, of course, name the organ. Another picture of esophagus, another one. Um, how about here? Name this organ. What organ does this section come from? And so that, of course, is the pancreas. How about from this view, um, name this structure. And if you said pancreatic islet, you are correct. Um, and then how about the other major thing I might ask for, this purple tissue out here, what would this be? If you said a senar tissue or a senar cells, you're correct. And just for fun, let's add one more. What is this structure up here? That is a pancreatic duct. How about this structure? And again, that's a pancreatic, a pancreatic duct, just a larger one than the last one we looked at. And as long as I've got this picture up one more time, let's uh, name this darker stained tissue. And that is a senar tissue or a senar cells. 
what organ does this section come from? And that organ is the liver. This is liver. And so is this. And that's it. That's all I wanted for this video. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please, please leave them down below. And thank you once again for watching.